Mike Demergis out here in Los Angeles, California with director David Rodriguez. David, you just uh, finished up Last I Heard starring Paul Shervino, Michael Rappaport, and Renee Props. Uh, yep. Outstanding um, opening the other night here in Los Angeles as you had a screening. Uh, everything was very positive. What was your inspiration for this movie? You know, I, um, I'm glad you asked that question because because of the, the movie and the story and the subject matter, I get asked that quite a bit. But essentially, it's, it's, it's really a two-part answer to your question. Is, you know, I made a couple films, uh, Push and um, American Bully, before last I heard. And they were solid films. You know, my first film was my first film, so it was a great first effort. Um, my second film got a lot of acclaim, uh, but it had you know, an audience you know, about that big. And I really felt like I needed to write something that you know, was very intimate, that I completely understood, that I owned, that was undeniable. Um, and I, I, I know the world that last I heard is set in. So um, I just, you know, I felt like, hey, if I'm going to do something that's going to really be a breakout, it's got to be something that I completely understand and know and I'm intimate with. So um, that was sort of the, the mindset coming out of my second feature and then uh, I was watching Discovery ID, and it was a story of Jack Falcone, who's this FBI guy who's actually Cuban from Miami, and he, he infiltrated the Gambino family in the Bronx. And uh, he was talking about this guy who, who had just done, you know, served eight years in prison, and he comes home and he's trying to reclaim his rackets. And one of the things he said was the guy was pitiful. And that was the one you know, word, that one poignant word that, that made all the sense in the world to me. And, and I just started writing. I said, man, there's a story here. And, you know, we've all seen uh, Goodfellas and, you know, and, and Casino and The Godfather and Once Upon a Time in America, Miller's Crossing. I mean, these wonderful gangster movies, but we really never get to know what happens to these guys when they're not in a position of power anymore and they're incredibly vulnerable. And, and especially nowadays where it's such a progressive society so a lot of that old school bravado and that thing that that that's uh that's so prevalent in their personality um you know ha has to be manipulated in a different way um and i just felt it would be a great challenge for um you know for uh, an actor like paul servino and, and talking about paul servino he's a mob boss joe scolari spends more than 20 years in, incarcerated comes out and it's a totally different world and i thought it was fascinating the way you took that he had the old world old school mentality and how he adjusts and he comes out with his daughter his family his friends and everything and he really had to adjust at the time and i thought that was right. fascinating the way you did that Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think, um, you know, when he first read the script, he, he saw the last name and he says, Rodriguez, he, he called me and I was in the airport on my way to, to help produce a movie upstate New York. And he calls me and he goes, Rodriguez, he goes, what do you know about Italians? <laughs> you know, and I said, well, you know, I grew up around these guys and I'm, uh, yeah, I think a great, any great writer is an even better listener. And because you're, you know, in that world and not in it per se, but just around it and it's in it's it's the media presence of the mob in new york was so huge in the mm -hmm. 1980s especially with the Gotti era and the and giuliani taking down the five families and all that stuff sure. you you were it was in your in your in your dna so to speak or at least in your visual dna um so you know he he made the movie and he just felt like man you hit all the marks uh all the the personality marks and the nuances and i want to i want to do it i want to go for it when you were writing this, did you have Paul Sorvino in mind, or did you have some other actors? Because because Paul was bang on, perfect for the role, I think. Because everybody looks at yeah. him, especially from back in the '90s, as a mob boss. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, well, when I first, when I originally wrote it, I mean, look, there are only five guys that can play this role. You know, where where they're going to have that sort of, you know, enormous recognition. Um, you know, the Pacinos and the De Niro's and the you know, and Chaz, who actually was in the movie, um, uh, um, you know, and Pesci. And, but I felt like there was, there was a, a, a very vulnerable quality to Paul. Um, he has a certain kindness to him when he acts. Like, like, yeah. Like he's almost like the godfather or an uncle yeah. that, that you kind of appreciate and you knew growing up. Oh, totally. I mean, he, he's just that guy. You know, he's got this simpatico thing where, you know, if he hurts, you hurt. Um, and, and he just doesn't really bring a shtick to the – to, you know to the table it's just, he's he's fresh he's new 
Um, and he's just a master actor. I mean, it was it was great working with him, and it's even better having developed a friendship with him. You know, we're very, very close now, so it's, it's a good thing. And the setting, of course, is in Queens, New York. Uh, the houses are a couple apart, where that he plays with Michael Rappaport, yeah. who plays Bobby DiBianco. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought one of the telling uh, telling parts in the movie was that one scene where where Servino's out there, Joe Scaleri, and he wants to get back. He wants to sit down. That's right. very much an old school term, a sit down with the old boys. And Rappaport basically says, you know, B Bobby B DiBianco says, I, I can't do that. Right. And you were wondering at what point was Scaleri going to reach back into his past and says, like, I can't be an average Joe. I have a bum ticker here. I don't have much time. Right. And that was, I thought, was a very moving scene where basically Rappaport's character says, look, I can't do this for you. He had to say no. Yeah, and, and that was, uh, you know, that was the one thing that I really wanted to do with that Bobby DiBianco character, which was masterfully, masterfully acted by uh, Rappaport, um, is I, he needed to be that strong sort of cornerstone, you know, that, that person that was just unwavered. Like, you, there was no way that you were going to make this guy do anything he didn't want to do um, and do something illegal. I mean, it just wasn't a part of who he was he had a strong constitution the character as i was writing it um i always you know felt like you can try to push him to the edge but he's just never going to relent um and the fact that he stood up to a guy like uh like the mr joe character it was a testament to that you know where where he he wasn't gonna be led down the wrong road just for passing on a message you know which is the you know, which was the the real the crux of it, um, and I and I just feel like you know there there are a lot of Italian Americans like that. You know, where it's not all about the, you know the, uh, you know the goomba gangster Guido stuff. You know, there you know it's there's another side that 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 Hollywood doesn't want to know about, and I think that's one of the reasons why. You know, it's it's come out in the reviews. You know, we've gotten some incredibly strong reviews and a couple have been lukewarm. And I think it was that these critics and, and, and fans of the gangster genre don't want to see um, the other side. You know, they don't want to see a vulnerable gangster. Um, they don't want to see somebody standing up it's, it's to it. It's to, a human side. Really. Right. That's what it is. I mean, Servino's yeah. showing the human side to everything. Uh, again, uh, I think the movie is based strongly on relationships he had with uh, Rapport's character and, and mm -hmm. of course uh, Renee Propp's great performance as a daughter, Rita, and I thought that was fascinating. She had to come to terms with her father being away for 20 years, didn't know who her mother was until later on in life. Yeah, don't and give then, it away. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, the great scene when they're in the, they're in the park bench and you know, she, they had that nice long conversation. Yeah, yeah, it was, I mean, work, uh, working with Renee Propp's uh, was definitely a um it, it was it was special you know I, I mean in the beginning she was reluctant to do it because she's not italian at all she grew up actually in the uh you know in, in the southwest in arizona so you know she spent a lot of time in new york though um so she's kind of a new yorker by proxy but um but again you know it it's i i think the words were there and the scene was there and it's just the the level of talent that these actors have, um, the, the collective years of experience that that made you know these um, these 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 words just come to life, you know. Another another fascinating part of the movie was the dialogue. I thought I thought it was kind of very simple. You know, I'm saying, you know, without you're saying something without saying something. Right. And I thought it was very conversational, whether it's someone hanging out at a deli or a restaurant and their friends are on the deli and they're just kind of hanging out, passing the time as a social thing, not just coming there to yeah. buy food. It's their way of life, their way of socializing. Sure. Sure. Yeah. You know, and a lot of that just came from, uh, you know, uh, your original question, which was what's the genesis, you know, and when you write something like that. Um, you want it to be authentic and you want it to ring true and you want it to feel like a conversation. And I think too many times young writers overwrite, you know, and they want to bang it over the head. And I think in this particular situation, you really need to be from New York and from that neighborhood to understand that, you know, this doesn't necessarily mean this. Right. You know, it could be. And you're saying something without saying something. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, I, I, you know, a lot of that needed to uh come out in the script and and it's one of the reasons why uh why i think we were so successful at at at, at you know at 
making it sound and look as authentic as, as it did. Uh, I thought the, a couple of uh, authentic parts were the character played by John Williams talking about going to Florida. What am I going to do going yeah. down to Florida? I thought that was very authentic because so many New Yorkers talk about going to Florida and some want to go and some don't want to well, that's, go. Well, that's the migration structure of, uh, of a retired person in New York. You know, let's, let's go down to Florida and build a house. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, one thing I was wondering as I'm watching the movie is how is this thing going to end? And I'm not going to give it away here. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, how's, how's it going to end here? this former mob boss and that kind of kept me in suspense throughout the movie yeah i mean you know the the ending um we we went through a couple of uh incarnations of the ending and and ultimately i think paul sorvino was right Uh, i mean he he just had a thought and he said this guy this guy's a, a gangster at the end of the day i mean he's a family guy and he loves his daughter and he's all about respect and um you know, and, and that whole thing, you know, just the, 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 the undercurrent of family. But at the end of the day, his vocation is being a gangster. And, and we had to honor that um, in, in, in some way, some sort of way. We just had to honor the fact that that's who, you know, that's who this guy is. Now, as Servino said to you, had as a guy with the last name Rodriguez get involved in this. Uh, your background, your father's a uh, Korean War veteran. Right. You went to New York Military Academy, yeah. former corrections officer. How did you get involved in filmmaking? Well, you know, the I've always been enamored with show business. I mean, it was just something about it, you know, the, the lights, the Hollywood sign, you know, the studios, you know, and just seeing it in movies and on TV shows, it was just something that, that I was drawn to. Um, and my oldest sister, Janet, uh, she, she took me to every summer movie. On, there was a theater on Fordham Road in the Bronx, and we'd go there and we'd see Jaws and Rocky and the first Star Wars. And, and it was really you know, a combination of, of, of that and having this creative brain and, 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 you know, and, and just growing up in a very colorful environment where there's a lot of dancing and a lot of... Uh, a lot of family, a lot of entertainment, you know, and, and you just did that. But growing up in, in a blue-collar environment isn't the most conducive for a creative brain. So it was, you, you kind of feel a little awkward. And then as I got older, I said, you know what, this is just something I have to do. And, you know, 15 years ago, 15, 16 years ago, I started writing. And, um, you know, I never, you know, I never stopped. And then, you know, uh, I finally, in 2003, I just, you know, I said, you know, this is something that I just have to do for the rest of my life. And it was the best decision I made. I recently did an interview with Nia Vardalos and talking about my big fat Greek wedding. She wrote something that she knew. And I see that in this piece, as you said, this is something you grew up and knowing. So you I hope I have the same success you had. <laughs> you wrote something that you knew. And I yeah. think you really touched the heart because it could be uh, my, my father was from Country Club in the Bronx very neighborhood kind of setting. sure it could be any of these italian american settings in new york it, it definitely had that feel whether it was in queens the bronx or brooklyn or anything like that yeah it was um it, it was just important again to, just to have that authenticity and when you write something that you know like nia did and 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 i i think i did with uh, last i heard um it's going to resonate you know at some point and people are going to see it and people are going to fall in love with it and you know there's certainly Many characters to fall in love with, and last I heard, it was just a fun, great movie to do. Mike Demerges here in Los Angeles with director David Rodriguez.